live. Let's see. All right. All right. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depending on when you're watching this um, video. This is a voice and face of Dr. Tolope Ola Benton of Living Spring Family Medical Center here in Mansfield, Texas, where we help our patients live long and well because we believe the quantity of life um, or the quality of life is just as important as the quantity of life. I'm excited to be here again, uh, do another live. This is the first for the year 2022. Um, and I'm happy to be, not to have our guest, Dr. Okwe Danion here with, um, with us. She is an otolaryngologist, a head and neck surgeon. Um, I'm going to let her introduce herself, but I'm really happy to have her here um, because we're discussing the topic ENT, ear, nose, and throat issues with the ENT um, doc. We'll be talking about specifically sinuses. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you, um, Dr. Danion. Thank you for being here. Um, please introduce yourself. Who are you and what do you do? Sure. Thank you so, so Thank you much, so Dr. Alani, for having me over. over. Um, my name is Akhen Manning, just like uh, Dr. Alabington said. I am an ear, nose, and throat ear, surgeon, and, throat and surgeon. So people know us as otolaryngologists. surgeons. So basically, we treat, so basically we treat children and children adults and adult with disorders of the head and neck. Um, mm -hmm. I treat patients medically as well as surgically. So I see patients so I see in the clinic and also in surgeries in the operating room. So with some complaints so that people have been with is ear pain, ear ear pain ear hearing ear loss, ear sinus ear issues, ear issues ear difficulty breathing through the nose, um, thyroid issues, head and neck cancers. So we see a variety of things. Interesting. So there you have it. Uh, an otolaryngologist, head and neck issues, essentially, you 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 do the whole gamut. So awesome, awesome. Now, our next question is this, though. Why, why do you do what you do? And I always like to ask a question just to kind of get an idea into, like, what was your thought process? How did you become what you are right now? Um, if you don't mind briefly letting our guests know. Sure. Um, so, um, so why do I do what I do? First and foremost, I love surgery. And ENT is a surgical subspecialty. So in med school, I did a different um, surgical subspecialties and fell in love with ENT. It was just a great fit. I got along with the people. I really love the variety. So like I said, we do a lot. It's a small space, but there's a lot in there. Um, and the fact that the children and adults um, and also we have the opportunity to really improve people's quality of life. And so that makes me happy and that keeps um, me doing what I'm doing. All right, awesome. You love it. Hey, that's that's beautiful. You can combine your passions um, as a way, you know, also to make a living. That's awesome. Um, so you obviously enjoy what you do. So that's great. And I'm happy for you. That's very important in life. Um, so our first question, our focus <laughs> is sinuses. All right. We talk about sinuses a lot. Uh, I see a lot of patients. Oh, I have sinus headache. I have sinus congestions. Um, but what are sinuses? What are sinuses? Great question. And Great how question. do they get, sorry, and how do they get clogged? Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, this is the greatest so question, especially this time of year. Um, the sinuses, sinuses are air-filled air spaces in the bones of our face and skull. skull. So we have sinuses so we have in our cheeks, cheeks, in between our eyes, behind, behind our foreheads, and also our foreheads behind our noses. Um, the sinuses have lots of functions, but most importantly, they produce mucus, which helps to moisten our nose and also to protect the nose from things that we don't want in the nose. The mucus traps things like dirt, dust, pollen, viruses, bacteria, fungus. So it traps those things, and those things are then swept to the back of the throat, to the back of the nose, and then down our throat. Or we sneeze them out. Um, the sinuses, um, the, the lining sinuses. Of, the, the, of the sinuses, the tissue in the sinuses, the in the sinuses also sinuses. helps to I'm filter the to air that we breathe in and humidify the air. So basically, those so things, basically that those things uh, are listed, the dust, uh, listed, the, the, dust pollen, the, the viruses, things, things like that, when they enter our nose, they can cause inflammation or swelling of the tissue of our noses. 
and that can cause and lots of the cause drainage, lots the mucus drainage, that comes out of our nose, out of um, it can cause that drainage to become thick. Um, it can cause things like sneezing. Um, and so basically the sinuses have openings that connect it to the nose. So when those openings become swollen by all the irritants that enter our nose, the sinuses can't drain the mucus into the nose. So basically the mucus gets trapped in the sinuses and that's what makes them clog. And so when mucus is trapped in the sinuses, that can, can give us a sensation of pressure, it can give us a sure. That mucus can then get infected because bacteria likes to grow in, you know, mucus that's just sitting there. And when it gets infected, that's when the mucus can turn green, green fevers, it can turn into a Okay, awesome. Um, so a lot of points you mentioned that ideally the sinuses are supposed to air, air, air filled. Right, they're supposed to be empty, but they serve to help with filtering um, dust and and irritants away from us. And over time, they can get congested, it can get inflamed, and that's where you get a lot of the symptoms of the sinus pressure, the sinus headaches. Um, but they're there as a preventive measure. Um, but sometimes they can get um, a little agitated. Now, that being said, what are some of the common causes of sinus problems that you see in your office? Sure. So sometimes so it's just sometimes the it's just upper respiratory, upper respiratory you know, colds that go wrong. That go wrong. Um, sometimes oh. allergies. Allergies. allergies are a huge thing, especially in Texas. Um, people are allergic to cedars and different grasses and dogs and cats and dogs and things like that. And that can cause inflammation and then congested sinuses. Um, some less common things that are interesting are things like polyp. And a polyp is a benign, meaning not bad, not cancerous nasal mass. It's just inflammation gone crazy. So um, sometimes things can grow in the nose and obstruct or clog the sinuses. Um, other things can be things that we have immune problems, so they're not able to fight bacteria and fungus um, effectively, and so they get lots of sinus issues. But I would say definitely, would say the, definitely the upper the respiratory infection are the main things that cause sinus issues. issues. Okay. Um, now, you, you, you mentioned, now there's some things that are I guess, preventable, and there's some they're not. Of course, in this season of COVID, COVID is one of the causes of the upper respiratory infection-like symptoms. Now, um, from your point of view, what are ways to prevent some of the sinus congestion or sinus issues sure. um, that you've highlighted? Um, of course, sure. the ones that we have control over and the ones that we don't. Um, but what are preventive um, measures that one can take to prevent sinus issues? Great question. So just like you mentioned, in this era of COVID, we're kind of learning things that help to prevent, you know, upper respiratory infections in general. So things like washing hands, wearing a mask, especially around people who are sick, um, you know, those things can go a long way. Then for people who have allergies, um, if you notice that you start sneezing or getting a reaction when you're with dogs around lots of dogs, it's important to you know be aware of the things that trigger those um, reactions and then avoid them. Um, and that can also look like you know making sure you disinfect regularly, dust regularly, dust regularly, dust um, high filtering, uh, high filtering air, air, air in your house. Um, getting um, allergy yeah, tested um, if needed. Um, and you could talk to your primary care doctor or an ENT about that. Um, and then specifically and then for treating sinus disease, um, things that are really helpful to do at home is flushing your sinuses out with salt water. Um, so that's the nasal saline rinses, right? The irrigation. Rinses, the irrigation, not just the spray, but an actual mm -hmm. flush where you're squeezing salt water up one side of the nose and it comes out the other side. That's very helpful it's in very helpful cleaning out the mucus, you know, cleaning out any dust out and any dirt, dirt, dirt and um, allergens or bacteria or viruses that can be on the nose. Um, and then also using a nasal spray, a nasal spray. I'm sure people have heard of people 
um, that is bolognese and the nasal sinus and the nasal sinus are really good at preventing chronic yeah. sinus. Chronic and um, the saline yeah. rhythm, so there are a lot of this on that. Before, before you go ahead, I, 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 a lot of patients tell me this, Doc, I don't like the feeling of the, the, the irrigation off my nose. Um, sometimes they say, I have patients say they feel like it, they're drowning. Right. Um, you know, but, you know, even having conversations with ENT over the, ENTs over the years, the recommendation is to keep doing that as a preventive measure. Do you have any tips for anyone who's probably asking, like, Doc, you, you don't know how it feels. It, it, it doesn't feel good. Sure. Um, is there a way to do it that would make it less, less traumatizing? <laughs> great, great question. So, yeah, there are some tips. First of all, making sure that you're using either distilled water or boiling water and letting it water and letting it room temperature is important. Making sure the water is lukewarm, the water. so not too cold, not too hot. Um, um, Lots. There are several there ways. Are several to, ways um, administer the salt water in your nose. So I think so. There are the squeezy so bottles, the squeezy med sinus rinses that I really like. There's a neti pot. There is something called the sinugator where you just keep your right in it. You know, squirts the water through. There's something called the mavage. which is the thing that a lot of people are asking me about. It's basically a machine that. Um, you know, delivers the water in your nose the water and the cycles it back into the machine. It doesn't go back into your nose. Back into your nose. It's one the closest. closest. Um, so yeah. I think it's important. Um, so I think it's important. It's one way. One you way. Know, you know, if you don't like if one way, one way, try another way. Also, um, I always tell my um, patients to make sure you bend your head, bend your head over the sink, okay. over the sink, you know, so that when you're so that when you're the water, it's not going to get down your throat, down it'll your throat, and the other side of your nose. Another thing I tell patients to say that it feels that like that the water is down their ears. ears. If mm -hmm. you say ka while you're squeezing up you're the water, up it helps water. to close off the connection to the ears, and that can help prevent. You say you say what? Ha. Ka with K. Ha. Ha. Ka. Ka. All yeah. right. I tell them to try. Hi, it is. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So very helpful tips. Thank you. Um, now you were saying also irrigation. You said allergy testing. Um, finding out if you're allergic to something in the atmosphere or in the environment that you may need to avoid or getting um, allergy shots as well. That could also help with minimizing the the swelling that can contribute to the sinus um, um, congestions. Now, I was going to ask now, what what home remedies would you discourage? Um, like what have you, based on your experience, like what, what are the things people have tried that you would say is a, is a no, no. Um, <laughs> um, great question. So I, I don't think I've heard of any heard home, of any crazy home remedies. Home remedies. Um, you can let me know if you have. Yeah. However, there are yeah. some over the awesome counter medications, medications that lots of patients use regularly, regularly, regularly that I discourage. One of them, one of them, is Afrin. Afrin, which is a decongestant <laughs> nasal spray. People also use Sudafed. Um, so I discourage um, using decongestants daily because they can cause something called rebound congestion. So the congestion might go temporarily, but it then comes back and it comes in worse. So um, I tell patients to avoid using decongestants for more than three days. I mean, decongestions have, de decongestions have their place. Like if someone has an infection or severe congestion, they can't breathe at all. Sure, use it, but sure, don't use it like, for no, more than four days, days because days. then um, it can become a big thing and then days. cause that rebound. Yeah. That yeah. So that's, I think, the number one thing that I see. I see patients who are like, yeah, you can for three, three years. And I have to literally leave yeah. them off of it. Um, um, and then another and thing that, another that I discourage, that I discourage is, it's not a treatment, it's, not but it's treatment. an idea. Mm -hmm. People right. always yes. assume People that any pain in the face or the head or is the a sign of this. And it might not be. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. it's important to go to your it's doctor and get evaluated for sinus disease. But if you've been on all the medications, all the irrigations, and you're still having pain, sure, still having pain. The 
think of other possible causes and migraines that are really common causes of sinus headaches. So just keeping an open mind. Okay. All right. Um, I like that you mentioned uh, one has to be very careful with over-the-counter medications. And of course, this is a conversation you should have with your primary care doctor, your ENT doctor as well. It's individualized. Um, this does not serve as um, specific medical advice, but really important for you to, to have a conversation with your primary care doctor and your specialists as needed. But very, very cautious with, with the use of decongestants, especially Afrin. Um, and decongestants can also raise your blood pressure. So uh, very, very, very important. And I cannot overemphasize the importance of nasal um, irrigations. I tend to encourage those who tend to have sinus issues to do that preventively, mm-hmm. not just when you feel miserable, when you feel super congested. Um, I think it's a good preventive habit to have. Thank All you. right. Um, my next question. So I have this uh, question from a patient he said, I have frequent sinus congestion and runny nose. My grandmother has um, had similar issues and was diagnosed with a nasal polyp. Could I have it too? Uh, what do you think, Doc? Um, so it's possible. So possible. But obviously, right. it's obviously really important for you to come get evaluated by a nose and throat doctor because congestion and runny nose can be caused by so many things. As we discussed, it can be caused by allergies. It can be caused by chronic sinusitis. And um, with patients who have chronic sinusitis, they have these symptoms of the sinus headaches, the headaches um, for more than like 12 weeks at a time. Sometimes these patients need to be put on antibiotics in addition to the nasal irrigation from the sterile nasal spray. So it's important to come in and get evaluated. Um, another thing is that polyps can also be associated with other symptoms, such as loss of sense of smell and you know severe obstruction or difficulty breathing from one side of the nose. Really thick, yellow green drainage. So, um, with polyps, it's with not just, necessarily it's not just the nose. Just you can have those other symptoms associated with it. Um, but what I would do yeah, if I would do like this in the clinic, I would actually use a small camera, camera in the nose, it in the um, and that would um, be able to tell whether, really whether there really are polyps all inside the nose. If I don't see polyps, it's still possible that there could be stuck in the sinus. Which mm-hmm. I can't see through that camera. So at that point, I would have to get like a CT scan, which is pretty much like a, a super X-ray. Super X-ray, and that would be able to uh, show me whether there are polyps in the sinus. So yeah, it could be polyps, but it might not be. So it's important to get checked out, um, get a scope in the nose, and then you go from there. All right, awesome, awesome. I have one more question. So this I get a lot, Doc. I have sinus. I think I have a sinus infection. I need antibiotics. Mm. I'm I'm draining green green um, discharge from my nose. Um, it was yellow, then it was clear, then it was green. So I think now that it's green, it's really a bacterial infection, and I need antibiotics. Um, what is? I think I kind of want you to speak on that a little bit because sometimes it's 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 hard convincing patients. Um, that you know may not necessarily be a bacterial infection that requires an antibiotic. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But what are your thoughts on the color? I mean, in my it's experience, bacteria, no, by the time no, it gets to the green, time, yeah. it is a bacterial infection. Um, and a lot of times I end up, it's so easy for me to look into the nose of my look into the nose. Sometimes I end up mm-hmm. the um, of that um, drain and that then that can tell me for sure that it is a bacterial sure infection. But usually, uh, usually you know, it's not just the green drain, it would be the pressure, the pressure. it might be a low grade fever, you know, it might be loss of sense of smell. Um, and then, of course, with sinusitis, you can say that if it's been five days, it probably hasn't gotten to a bacterial infection yet, but if it starts getting worse or it got worse. better and then it gets worse and then by worse. seven to ten days seven you know the symptoms are still pretty um, well, you know significant yeah. and yeah it's probably a bacterial yeah. infection. Yeah. So usually yeah. we say the viral yeah. infections are yeah. yeah. to live when it's starting to pass the five day seven day mark yeah. and they're still mm-hmm. having that discolored drainage then yes yes okay so so it's much more 
So it's much more than the color. It's yeah. um, other symptoms and the duration as well. Yes. Um, and, and one has to be very careful with antibiotic use. And so uh, yeah. when those conversations are had, you know, it's definitely easier to just prescribe medicine. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's more to prevent the risk of um, antibiotic resistance. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure the antibiotics will work when they when they are in fact needed. Exactly. Um, awesome. Awesome. This is very, very good. This has been very helpful. I appreciate you, Dr. Danion, for coming on. Now, I have people who are looking and who are saying, this doc is awesome. Um, I need to see an ENT. I need to know where to find her so I can get my primary care doctor to refer her. Now, where can people find you? Sure. So I am located I am in the Professional One professional Building, building. right next door to the New Georgia Health, Health Hospital Mansfield on Lone Star Road. On Lone Star Road. It's right in between 360 and 387. Um, so I would love to see you. My address is 2302 Lone Star Road, Suite 220 for the um, in Mansfield, Texas. In Mansfield, Texas. Um, is there an area um, where is I there an area the area? phone number? Oh, or? yes. Um, yeah, so after the live is done, I'm going to put that information. Um, and you can do the, do so too on the Facebook page. Um, okay. And you could tag. Um, I also put your Facebook uh, um, uh, handle there as well mm -hmm. for your business. Um, for your business. So that way people know where to reach out to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, thank, you so much. thank you so much for coming. It's been awesome. I've learned a lot. A lot of things to help my patients also feel better. Um, I look forward to doing this again with you. I will let you know when. Um, but thank you so, so, so much for coming. Um, and thanks to those who are watching with us. Thank you for watching. Um, if you're watching this uh, live, um, if you're watching this on replay, please make sure you share with those who you find, um, who would find this actually useful, especially during this time. Um, that being said, it's been a pleasure. This is The Voice. Of Dr. Ola Benton. If you or anyone you know is looking for a family physician who's thorough, who's passionate, and who's caring here in the Mansfield, Texas area, I am she. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.